creating a list of the highest dividend paying stocks in Python. What's good fam, it's your other brother Adam Gift Bags. We're gonna be creating a list of the highest dividend paying stocks in Python. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna open up our command line in our Python environment. Make sure that we have the Yahoo Fin library installed. So go ahead, open up your Anaconda prompt. Make sure it's in the correct environment. You can check your environment using this drop down here. And then once you have that open, pip install yahoo underscore fin. And once that's all confirmed up, then go ahead and open up your spider and begin to import the libraries that you're gonna need, import the modules that you're gonna need. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna grab that list of tickers from the previous video that has all validated tickers from the previous exercise. Then next, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can go ahead and grab stock data and dividend data for each of the tickers. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a time series for the stock price, and then we're going to create a time series for the dividend um, for the ticker that we've chosen. And then we're going to get the dividend yield by putting the dividend payment over the stock price. The next what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get the last dividend that they issued. We want to get the last price that the stock was trading at. That's going to allow us to create our dividend yield. And then what we want to do is get the last dividend date. And then we want to get the last the dividend date from the dividend prior so that we can estimate if this is a quarterly dividend, semi-annual dividend, uh, irregular dividend, or an annual dividend. All right, now, of course, very importantly, we want to calculate the dividend yield. That's just going to be their last dividend for the current stock price, so, or the latest stock price. But, you know, it kind of assumes that pay the same dividend they're not going to cut it they're not going to raise it so we want to store that data we also want to know okay how much time was between the last dividends the last two dividends so that will give us an idea if it's quarterly semi-annual or annual and then we're just going to put some rough parameters around that and we're going to assign that so here we go okay so one thing we definitely want to do is check and see what happens if we try this with a stock that doesn't have any data for their dividends. So let's check it out. Okay, so I quickly just implemented some try block logic for any exceptions during any data requests. And then additionally, if no data is recovered um, during the dividend data request, skip over that ticker so uh, what's gonna happen is we're gonna put this in all of this inside of a for loop so I have the continue uh, statements in there so that we can just move on to the next ticker uh, but then it looks like what I'm gonna go ahead and do next is I'm gonna try to organize um, each of these into a row that we would append into a data frame so at the end of our exercise we're gonna have a data frame that has list of tickers as well as their dividend yield and then we're going to have the date of the last dividend they paid so that we can know if maybe it's like been discontinued and then also if uh, what the difference or excuse me what the frequency of the dividend yield is so let's go ahead and put that all together okay so so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to just create the for loop. I um, probably should have done this earlier, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it and then just make sure everything's working. Okay, the for list looks good. What we're going to want to do next is just add all of our items to a temporary list and then we're going to append that 
that temporary list into the master list. So, and then eventually that master list is going to go into a data frame, and then that data frame is going to output to an Excel file. So we'll be able to have all of these values in Excel. Alright, so it looks like everything's getting into that final dividend yield data frame. Uh, we're just going to quickly get that over into Excel. I'm also going to add a sleep function so that we don't um, send too many requests too quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in between our data requests and then also at the end of our uh, at the end of our program as well. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and test it real quick for 10 tickers. list of um, companies that have paid dividends in the last 385 days um, and then what we're going to want to do is we're probably going to want to sort the data in the, di in the data frame first and then we'll go ahead and save that to our excel file so i'm going to take the throttles out and then i'm going to quickly add a timer to this and see how fast we can get through these first 10. like that went ahead and ran. It looks like we were able to get through 10 tickers in about five seconds. And then I have our dividend data here. Okay, and everything is looking bright here in Excel. So we could probably go ahead and expand this and then run this across the whole list of 11,000. 11, Okay, so I was debugging it and there was an additional exception I wanted to add. So I went ahead and implemented a try block like so. And then added this exception to the bottom. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And then it's been able to run straight through. I'm about 2,000 tickers in right now, so everything looks good to go should produce some pretty interesting results. Um, there are some caveats like we were discussing with um, it being the current uh, dividend yield based on the last dividend price. You don't know if they changed their dividend. And then also if the stock price is tanking, it's gonna boost the dividend yield. So definitely some stuff to keep in mind, but long story short, that's how we do it, fam. Remember, you could be looking at these companies with these huge dividend yields, right? But they could have negative cash flows, bad management, highly leveraged you're just going to want to be aware of what you're getting into so definitely do your due diligence definitely do your research um, 